On this episode, we talk about pampering, ad blocking, and politicians. And feeling groovy. Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 148 of the Ask Gary V Show. Yesterday, D Rock stumbled hard and created an awkward show, so that was fun. Uh, today, we have a packed house uh, with us, including a new Gary team member, Brittany. Say hello. Hey, Vayner Nation. Brittany comes from the LA office. This is her first day on the team. Gonna work closely with Andy. Excited. And uh, that's what's going on at Vayner today. Nice day, I'm headed to London. Oh, I have to do my official Jets prediction today. Though there could be an episode tomorrow where I could do it there, but we're not completely firm yet that we're gonna do an episode. What do you think, safe way to go with the official prediction in this episode? Otherwise then we'd have a blank spot, okay. Official prediction at the end of the show. India, (laughs) let's get into the show. You're supposed to crescendo with me or, or harmonize or. Too. No, that's not gonna work. You can't fake me up. Take that. Now that now you don't have questions. Either. Right. So let's just do statements. <laughs> <laughs> Susie says, "I get tons of emails from politicians begging for money. How would you do better if you ran for president?" Hashtag ready for Gary. Yeah, I mean, look, guys, we've addressed this multiple times. If you're new to the show, I will never run for president because I wasn't born in this country, and if I can't have the top gig, I'm not playing the game. Um, How would I do it better? Easy, it's the whole thesis of all 148 episodes of this show. It's all about depth, not width. The, like, nobody's winning the random, I'm gonna blast you with email, give me 20 bucks game, buy my stuff game. The the blanketing and hoping and praying versus the depth is the complete misunderstanding of how to sell. Uh, I think oftentimes it makes sense to me that politicians are bad at this because most of my politician friends are terrible business people and salespeople. So it makes sense and usually, uh, you know, it's really, it's actually stunning what kind of level of disrespect I have for most politicians' salesmanship. Uh, they can sell themselves but not other products and I think that that at some level is an intriguing aspect and fine line in this whole thing. And so, email marketing is no different than what, you know, the direct mail that they used to do to try to get dollars and so, I don't know, I mean, there's so many ways to do it better. I mean, look, I think one of the best things a politician can do is literally sit in the room, sit on our goddamn ass, and for 15 hours, take a phone, take a phone, and literally do, and literally do, um, you know, Twitter reply videos. Literally search your name, because everyone's talking, and they either love you or they hate you, because if you're neutral, you're in deep crap, and, uh, and just reply to them and say, no, Rick, that is not my policy, or thanks, Susie, for the support. It's the depth over the with game. So the same stuff that works in selling stuff, selling uh, anything, uh, works in this scenario. And so I think Twitter replies, I think would be disproportionately powerful. I think Facebook is the most important platform for a politician due to the fact that older people tend to vote and that I think that Facebook is the holy grail of 45 to 70 year old reach right now, even better than television. So I would, uh, I would put out a lot of content in that world and talk more about my policies and my thoughts and more importantly show the human side of me. I don't know if people have been paying attention but I believe the last four to five presidential elections have been completely predicated on a popularity contest and we're in the entertainment of politics era. Um, not to get political but like if you just look at all of them, I mean like whether you hate Obama or you hate Bush, these are likable people to those sectors in comparison that we're in like complete and what's going on now, we are in an entertainment mode. Uh, and so I would be entertaining if I had that opportunity because that's what would work and so that's what I would do. I mean cold emailing is doing absolutely nothing. It feels completely cold. Uh, It, it, you know, I just wouldn't do it. Ian asks, Gary, what's your opinion on incorporating curse words into your actual brand and not just the content? Yeah, I I think that, um, look, I think if you're gonna go down a path where you're going to be doing something that you consciously know that a lot of people aren't going to like, whether that is cursing, whether that is before mentioned politics, religion, uh, gender issues, about you know, race. There are pillars in our society that 
evoke emotion and have lines in the sand. Cursing is one of them. A lighter version than some of the other things I mentioned, but you have to absolutely weigh the pros and the cons of it. You will turn off a stunning percentage of people by over cursing uh, and there'll be a, a, a smaller sector that is super motivated by it. For me, it's just very simple. Cursing for me is very simple. It's just what happens when I have the camera on me. Like the more people that look at me, it's what I do. It's very, and so it's just entrenched in me. And so I believe that I have to always at all costs be me because that's my biggest upside. If you're forcing the curse word because you're targeting 16 to 22 year olds and you think they're gonna think it's cool and it doesn't come from your soul, you're gonna lose. But if your cursing comes from your soul, if you are like, if you are like, this is peanut mother butter. Like this is it. Like if that's where you're going with it, then like cool. Like if it, I truly believe that people have a stunning positive reaction to disproportional authenticity. I am an absolute byproduct of it. I've watched uh, as my maturity and comfort zone with it has grown what it's meant to me. Um, it allows people to, it's just a nice thing and so if you're authentically there, cool, but like coming from your soul, coming from your heart, not forcing it is the key, regardless of cursing, not cursing. You know how many people do the other side? We don't talk about the other side. You know, I always get talked about being rogue or aggressive or things of that nature. What about the people that are forcing the kindness or the bullshit? Like, that's going on way more. There's way more people, way more people forcing the acceptance and and approval and following the path than our people, that's why the people that are going the other way have disproportionate anomaly results. So how about that question? How about India, the people that don't curse when they feel it? I mean, I think that you should just do what feels good, you know? Do what feels right. Yeah, <laughs> do what feels good <laughs> and right. <laughs> Let's go, keep going. You really, you inspired a nation. <laughs> It's gonna be a huge meme. Minnie says, hustle is good, but often wears us down. Do you ever pamper yourself? Like maybe go in for a pedicure or manicure? Minnie Mouse? No. no. Minnie. Hoping. Uh, Minnie, do I ever pamper myself? Not in the cliche, like I, I bite all my nails, my nails are a disaster. Um, now that I've been working out for 15 months, uh, Mike makes me do massages, because I need them at times, and I like it, it's nice. It's a good thing. Uh, no, I'm not really into, not the cliche things, I pamper myself by doing whatever I want at all times, always. So I, I, would, I would call that the ultimate pampering. Um, so that feels good. That to me I think is, uh, by the way, that, it, you know what, that might have been a very interesting moment. If you want to talk about what the best outcome of being a successful entrepreneur, it's that. The money is really fine, the, the admiration is fine. There's nothing close than knowing that I could just get up right now and just like, you know, that's it, like, you, you noticed before, like, I slammed India's laptop and she's like, great, you have no questions? I'm like, great, great, what? What are you gonna do about it, India? So, you know, like, like I like that. I like, I like being able to do what I want. I don't know what that just was. If I wanna get up for a second, I'm gonna get up for a second. Um, I, I think the way I pamper myself is if I do want to, uh, if I wanna turn my 40th upcoming birthday into a family celebration, I can afford to do that. That feels incredible. And so, I pamper myself by the experiences going to London in a couple of hours to watch a Jets game, that's my pampering, doing the things that make me happy. But what, you know, I don't get excitement out of a two hour pedicure where I unwind and read gossip, but many people do. I walk around New York City and watch it happen 74,000 times a day. So cool, awesome, do your thing. So, you know, I don't, uh, I don't, you know, I'm trying to make my life a pampering moment. <laughs> it's good stuff, right? Feeling like you should just like always do what feels right. <laughs> it's just not something I usually said. It just came out. I get it. It felt good at the moment. It does, yeah. Okay, from Brandon. You're gonna be like, free the people. <laughs> from Brandon. Going to my hippie roots in SF. Um, from Brandon. In you know, SF, you're yeah. doing just fine in New York too. <laughs> no? I said hippie. I don't know. Wait, I'm confused. What's the question? Nothing. I just what? feel like you're doing good hippie stuff here too. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see what you said saying. my hippie roots in SF. I mean, yeah, you're, you're, like, you have brought, brought it here it too. Historical. Oh, Andy, what did you say? I brought it with. Me. I brought it with you. Okay, good. I was like, just excited that you said something. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go. <laughs> it was. Probably. I want to hear what it was. Brandon, you're 
Brandon wants to Andy, I like Andy. I like Andy's game. Andy has got the game of like, he doesn't talk all the time, but when he says something, it's meaningful. Like I, I actually, that was a genuine reaction of like, what did you say? Because I actually value the things Andy says because he doesn't say them as often. He's not quiet, he's not a mute, but he talks when, he, <laughs> he talks, he talks when there's ser- stuff to be talked about. I respect, I really respect that. I don't have that skill. I don't. India? But you can counteract it with listening. So. Well, I'm a tremendous listener. This is the big, this is the big unknown about me. Steve, it's true. I never said it wasn't. Yeah. India? This is really starting to become like the Z100 morning zoo, like, <laughs> like just full characters everywhere. Go ahead. Brandon asks, you don't talk much about ad blocking. With more people doing it, how will small and medium publishers and blogs survive? They'll survive by adjusting to the reality of the marketplace. There used to not be ads and they would make native content and soap operas integrated their products into the shows and the Ed Sullivan show put a big fat car of Lincoln Town Car that paid for that entire show in it and Alpo or whatever, that, that's Alpo's dog food, right? Alpo used to bring out its, uh, right? We used to bring out the dog on the Today Show and eat the goddamn Alpo right in front of America and so ads, my friends, are just one way to monetize. I didn't run ads on Wine Library TV all those years when everybody told me. I decided to monetize by getting paid millions of dollars to write a book and to speak and to actually build an audience and monetize them differently instead of making nickels and dimes on them. Nickels and dimes are cool, but you know what's way better? $100 bills. I feel like that's (laughs) from the movie, right? I mean, that's what it is, though. And so I'm, I'm laughing at everybody's panic because I think lowest common denominator average players are gonna get forced into being better. I actually think this is gonna motivate people to step up their game and not just mail it in. Uh, and so I'm excited to watch smaller and large. You know, it's way more, you know, it's a funny question and I'm sure it's coming from an entrepreneurial place. Big companies have a lot more to lose than you. Like ad blocking, and listen, it's all relative, right? Like you're 400 bucks, they're 40 million, fine. But like everybody's equal on this. Everybody's gonna be disrupted, not just small businesses and small publishers, big publishers that make all their goddamn money on banner ads and things of that nature have a real issue at hand and I think it's goddamn great because what I think is actually happening is that it's better for the end consumer. I mean, it is not fun for me, especially now that we're on full, but I need it back. Sorry, Periscope. How you guys doing? I'm just showing you D-Rock. Actually, I'll show you myself because you don't want to look at D-Rock. And so, well, they'd rather look at me. It's the Ask Gary Vee show, D-Rock. Um, you know, uh, I forgot my thought because I got mad at D-Rock. Um, you know, because, got it. Because I don't want to go to like ESPN.com and check a score and a big fat banner ad pops up and I got to exit and then I miss it and then I'm going to something I don't want and that cost me six seconds and time is the asset and so, I really, really think it's great. I'm not talking about it because I've been talking about intrusive advertising my whole life. This is just a continuation. It will get TiVo, ad blocking, whatever comes next, feed blocker, like whatever it is, it's all gonna happen. It's all happening, India. Feel good. (laughs) What else? Rachel asks, how does the engagement on YouTube compare to other social platforms? Is the reward worth the effort? Absolutely, YouTube is like literally one of the great platforms of the world and the engagement's very high. There's tons of, as a matter of fact, I put on my phone, I won't take it this time, I just put YouTube finally at the front of my phone because I'm engaging more in the comments because there's so much going on there and thank you so much for everybody who's watching the show on YouTube. The engagement's super worth it. What are you talking, who who said this? Rachel. Rachel. (laughs) Don't be sorry, Andy. Rachel, come on. What do you mean the engagement? Have you not seen a video on YouTube? Even shit videos have like three people saying, you suck. I mean, they don't even waste their time to do that on Twitter. (laughs) Engagement's incredible on YouTube. The commenting is bonkers. Videos that do well get tens of thousands of people saying things. uh, Maybe YouTube's the best engagement platform on the internet. I mean, Rachel. Fine, sorry, Rachel. Um, Statement of the day, would love some comments. Be interesting, I feel like this really did take the most radio-like vibe. Curious to see what people think about that. Uh, glad the show went back to its normal self. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, oh, official prediction. Official Jets prediction, I've been very hot. I mean, I had probably like 40 to 60 emails this week of like getting excited for my official prediction because people are now gonna bet heavily against it. So, please wanna first make note that this is not an official endorsement or <laughs> any legal ramifications of you following this advice is on your head. I don't know what, I gotta get Yudkin to make some sense. Uh, Yudkin's our lawyer. Uh, official prediction. 
I believe that the New York Jets will win this weekend. I think that the Dolphins are broken from the head coach down uh, and I feel like the Jets will win. I think Ivory will play this weekend. I'm still pretty worried about Decker and think he will not play. My gut tells me, uh, or if he does, it's gonna be very cautious, limited. Um, but we'll see, he might play. Um, <clears throat> they do have a bye week off of this, so I think a lot of guys are gonna go. Um, and I think they match up well. I like that it's a neutral place. Uh, I think London's an international town, let's call it what it is. New York is a better brand than Miami. Uh, and I think there'll be a little bit of love for that. Uh, and so I think that the Jets go into Wembley, where I will be, super excited, and pull this game out uh, 19-14. I think it's gonna be tight. I don't think there's gonna be a lot of scoring uh, unless there's turnovers. The way my prediction gets off is too many turnovers and scoring, which could happen. Though Tannehill like, threw a lot of interceptions last week. Uh, not, not usual for him. Uh, 19-14, New York Jets. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. When it feels good.